Hey everyone, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make house music like Black Loops. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets, all of that stuff in this video in the description. And if you're a Patreon, my Patreon check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's dive in. So, this loop you heard in the intro, we've got a few things here. The first thing we have is the sample chop, which sounds like this. So the way that I made this is using this jazz sample. What this is, is you can see I've got a bunch of different chops here, and then they're all in a drum rack. We got like... Oh yeah, like I said, just got this all on a drum rack. What these are from is from this upbeat jazz music. I found this on YouTube. This is actually royalty free, completely copyright free, all that kind of stuff. So it's all good to sample. It's totally fine to, you know, release a track using this and stuff like that. But yeah, this is just like this cool thing. I think this was made by somebody. I'm going to put the link to this in the description. I don't think this is a sample. I think this is something that somebody made and then just kind of like trying to make it sound old school. But I'll show you what it sounds like. <laughs> I think this area is where I pulled the main sample from. But yeah, so you can hear, it's just like this cool, kind of like old school, jazzy sort of thing. This is what you want to be sampling for this type of music. And a lot of times with sampling, you know, it can be an issue with copyrights and royalties and all of that. But if you look for something like this on the internet, you can find something cool that's going to be still okay to release. Like, I could totally release this track. Everything would be totally okay. I wouldn't have to get it cleared or anything like that. And that's really what you want to look for because sampling in 2019 is just almost impossible like just with getting things cleared and stuff at least on this scale like maybe for big hip-hop tracks you know you can still get them cleared but in the case of a track like this i think if you have a really obvious sample it's going to be hard to get the track cleared so it's a lot easier to just go through and find something like this so i'm going to put a link to this one in the description but you can find tons of these copyright and royalty free types of things on the internet but yeah, so you can see i even left it in here like how i chopped it like you can see we have all these little cuts here and there like in this part over here and over there and stuff. And yeah, so then I just found a bunch of cool little chops from that and then I brought them into a drum rack. And the technique with this also is it's not about finding exactly the pattern that you want right away. It's about just putting together a bunch of really cool stuff and then coming up with something out of that. So that's what I did. Like you can see there's a bunch of these in here that I didn't even use. And if you get this project file, which link is in the description, you can use these and make something completely different. But yeah, I just have these in here, and I've just kind of chopped them up, and then we've got them all as little phrases that we can just piece together. And then I made this pattern. So yeah, really simple. The key is just keeping it simple, because with these kinds of samples, you know, it's already like a phrase. You know, it's already got like that. You don't need to do a whole lot of like, you know, maybe chopping it like this. You don't have to do a whole bunch of that stuff. You can kind of just let the sample ring out. And yeah, it keeps it simple and a little bit more focused. And then for effects on this chop, I have a few things. The first thing we have here is a low pass filter. So this is set like this. And then you can see I've got an LFO on here just slowly moving it. Something I noticed with a lot of Black Loops tracks is when he'll use these kinds of samples, it's never just like this. It's never just... It's never just like the sample just playing without any movement. There's always something on top of it to give it some movement. And this is a really great way to do that. Again, it's just a low pass filter just cutting on some of those highs and then it's being moved really slowly. And you can hear it just gives the sound some movement and kind of brings it to life because now it's kind of coming in and out of the track. Oh yeah, then after that we have a bit of drum bus. 
to fatten the sample up and just make it a bit stronger. Then we have this auto pan, which is sort of like simulating a side chain. Like, this is the same thing as if I were to use LFO tool or Kickstart or one of those kind of plugins. You know, it just kind of gives it that quarter note pulse so that it sounds like it's being side chained to the kick. But this kick has a bit of like. Just a lot of body to it and a lot of stuff ringing out, so it's a little bit easier to do it this way than to actually side chain to that kick. And then you can just automate it to turn off. You know, if you have a part without the kick. The last thing we have on there is just a high pass filter cutting off the low end. And that is it for the sample chops. The next thing that we have here is the bass, which sounds like this. So here's the bass line. You can see it's really simple. It's just sticking around this E. Again, like I said. Just kind of following the sample chops. You know, nothing too complicated. Again, you want to just keep it simple and powerful. You don't want to do a whole bunch of stuff with the bass, like have it bouncing around with all the syncopation, just because it's not going to fit that well under the sample this way. You know, everything's very focused and together sounding. So yeah, and then you can see again, it's just E and A and G, really simple notes, just following the pattern of the sample. But the sound on this one is made using operator. What I have is, you can see, it's very simple. It's just two sine waves with the same octave, just doing a little bit of FM with each other. This is really meant to be like a sine wave. And you can hear when we bring in that second oscillator. It gives us kind of some extra warmth on top of that that makes it so you can actually like hear the bass and not just feel it. The only effects I have on there is just a bit of drum loss to fatten it up and make it a bit stronger in the mix and kind of like stand on its own. And then we just have an auto pan, same as the one on the sample chop, just kind of making it sound like it's side chain to the kick. And yeah, that is it for the bass. Very simple bass line. Next sound we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. So this one's really simple, obviously, it's just playing straight quarter notes. The key with this one is just the type of sound you choose, like it's this very round and warm kick. It still has a lot of punch, you know, so what you want to look for is something like this where you can see like it's still got a pretty strong transient. Even if the transient isn't that loud looking, you can still see like there's a solid transient on there and if we get rid of that, it's too soft. But then it's not going to just be like a type of kick, you know, it's just got a lot of warmth and fatness to it. And yeah, and then we just have a bit of drum bus on there, that really helps with the punch as well, here's without it. And then with it, so you can hear how that really makes it like, hit harder. And fills it out, and yeah, that is it for the kick. The next thing we got here is the percussion, which starts with this hi-hat, which sounds like this. So it's just playing on the upbeats. It's actually layered together with this hi-hat. And yeah, it's kind of like these two sounds come together for one. So you can see with the first one, it's just kind of this more like sharp hi-hat. And then with the second one, it's like this bright sort of open hi-hat. So yeah, we're just kind of getting the best of both because the open hi-hat on its own wouldn't have enough punch. And you can hear it would sound a little bit weak, but the one that's just like on its own. It doesn't have as much groove. So when you put these together, then you get the best of both worlds. So yeah, with this one, you can see like really simple with the layering. Didn't need to do a whole bunch of processing. It's just about choosing two sounds that are gonna fit together really well. And yeah, that is it for the hi-hat. After that, we have these shakers, which sound like this. So if I play this with the hi-hat. You can hear, they're just kind of playing off of the hi-hat. So this gives you something more subtle. This isn't going to be so in your face that can still give you something like on top of the hi-hat. You know, this way we have these. 
but they're not taking up so much space in the mix, but you're still getting some kind of like little groovy element like that. So yeah, with these, it's just about choosing the right sounds. Like you can hear these two play off each other very well. And it's just, yeah, about choosing two sounds like this that are going to fit together, which, like I said in the beginning, you can get these ones all in the description. Anyway, the last percussion sound we have here before I show you the group processing is this rim shot, which sounds like this. So you can hear it's just like a really punchy, fat-sounding rim shot. You know, just very mid-rangey. And yeah, this is kind of what you want. You don't want something that's going to be too, like, or too, like, just something very much like that, very like kind of sound where it's very fat and full without like taking up too much space. And then you can see I'm just getting that in a simpler and then we've got a utility converting it to mono to make it really hit right. If you want your sounds to hit properly like percussions, put them in mono. Sounds in stereo are never going to have as much impact to them as a sound that is just straight mono. And then the last thing we have on there is just a bit of drum bust to kind of fatten it up, give it a bit more punch. And yeah, and then on the percussion group, I've got just a little bit of drum bust and then an EQ8, so here's without this stuff. And then with it, so you can obviously hear very clearly why we're doing this. So the first thing is the drum bust, you can hear without it. And then with it, it gives everything a lot more punch, a lot more fatness, a lot more fullness in the mix. And overall, the sound is going to be a lot tighter and more together this way. And also, like, you can hear it just helps to bring the volume levels up. You know, it just makes it feel like everything that's going into it is kind of more even now. It feels like we have an even balance of everything. Oh, yeah, so I'm just going to have to drive and crunch up a little. It's on the medium setting. We got the transients up. And yeah, and then the only other thing on there is just an EQ8, which is cutting the low end and then boosting the very sharp highs. So here's without this. You can hear what that does in terms of just like opening this up and really bringing out the sharpness that you need in the mix. And yeah, that is it for the percussion. And then the last element that we have in here is just this vinyl noise, which sounds like this. So you can see with this one, really simple, it's just this nice vinyl noise sample. And then I've got it going through a little bit of auto pan to keep it kind of fitting under the kick like that. And then we just have a high pass on it to cut out some lawn. And yeah, this is very important with the style. Like if I turn this off, you can hear the mix is going to feel a lot less alive. And then when we turn it on, you can hear we get that, like, tss in the mix. It really breathes a lot of life into it. So, yeah, this is really important. If you don't do this, it's going to feel very sterile and flat. But, yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets. All that stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Also, guys, I want to let you guys know. I just dropped a new EP. The link to that is in the description. If you want to support me, awesome way to do it. Go check it out. It's super dope. Three tracks. Awesome stuff on this label called Avenue Recordings. Very good techno label. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that. Thank you so much, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.